Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Good to be with you this slightly rainy afternoon in the hills of Tennessee. I am Dr. Ken Berry, and for the next hour, we're going to be talking about a proper human diet and a proper human life. Now, the reason I talk about this all the time is because I used to be fat and pre-diabetic and have a lot of other medical issues that I suffered with every day, and I thought that was just part of getting old, and that's back when I was 35. I thought I was ah, just getting older. <clears throat> It's normal to be achy all the time and to keep gaining weight and to be pre-diabetic and have heartburn and dandruff and toenail fungus and other stuff we won't get into. I chose a different route, a different path. And I think more and more of you guys, as time goes on, you're like, you know, I think there may be a better way than following the standard advice and taking the standard pills. And that's what we're going to talk about this hour. And I'm going to answer your questions. If you have any questions, hey, Travis, how's it going? Hey, Mary. Hey, Carla. Uh, tell me what city or state or country you're watching this from. I love to, to get feedback of where you're at. I see Australia, Connecticut, Canada. Excellent. I love it. I love it. Oh, Cindy, I wish I could. I've got another thing right after this. I'm live right now on Facebook and YouTube and TikTok. Yes. Trying to teach the Chinese to be healthier too. You got questions about your health. You got questions about medications. You got questions about your diet. This is the place. If you know a friend or a loved one who needs better metabolic health, please send them a text message or an email. Or tag them and just say, hey, I'm sorry if this offends you, but uh, you're a diabetic. You need to fix that. Your family loves you. We want to keep you around for a long time. Please fix your diabetes. Please fix your metabolic syndrome. Please fix your obesity. Okay? It all comes down to your diet. Arizona, California, New Jersey. I uh, got a question. Why is my hair thinning? So anytime you're on a, any diet that makes you lose weight, you're going to have some hair loss. If you go on a vegan diet to lose weight and you're losing weight, you're going to have some hair loss. If you go on a carnivore diet and you're losing weight rapidly, you're going to have some hair loss. Okay. That's just, that's, that's how the human body works. That doesn't mean anything's wrong. Doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means you're losing weight and your body's going to, you're going to lose some hair and then it'll all grow back. Now, if you're eating a vegan diet, it may never grow back as thick as you want it to. But if you're eating a meat heavy keto, keto or carnivore, your hair is going to grow back better than it was before. Maybe not as good as you'd like for it to be, but better than it was before. <clears throat> Maravik is a chronic kidney disease patient. Now, Maravik, uh, I, I don't know if I need to tell you this or not, but we've had hundreds of people in our private group reverse their chronic kidney disease. Some were stage one, stage two, stage three, stage three B, even stage four. They've had a significant improvement in their kidney function by eating the proper human diet. Jeanette is watching from London, England. I'm going to be in London in May, Jeanette, at the... Uh, Public Health Collaboration, I'm speaking there. Nisha and I are going to be there. So you may see us walking the streets of London, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. There's Colorado, Massachusetts, Wisconsin, California, Missouri, Canada. I love it. I love it. Ah, good question from Melissa. When trying to lose weight on carnivore, do you need to, I think she meant to type eat leaner meats? Would OMAD help? OMAD stands for one meal a day. Uh, definitely uh, OMAD is going to help if you're trying to lose weight. If you're obese right now and you want to lose significant amount of fat without losing a lot of muscle or bone strength, then ketovore carnivore is the way for you. Absolutely. Now, eating leaner meats is not going to help you lose weight any faster 
than eating fatty meat, okay? I know it seems counterintuitive when you're first getting started with a proper human diet, that, but I'm already fat. How would eating fat, how's that going to help that? I get it. The physiology is much more complicated than that. Just because fat on your body rhymes with fat in your diet doesn't mean one caused the other. It was the carbohydrates that caused you to gain all that excess adipose tissue, okay? It wasn't the fat you were eating, at least not the animal fat anyway. If you eat too lean, you're going to be hungry all the time, okay? And that's going to cause you to, to give up on your diet prematurely. You've got to have the fat to satiate you. Also, your body uses that fat to build hundreds of different things from myelin sheaths to cell membranes. Your body uses that fat. You need that fat, okay? Cindy, keep leading by example, and your sons will one day, they hear you right now. They can't help it. It's hardwired for sons to hear their mom. They may not be doing what you say, but they hear you. And when they've seen enough drastic change in your health, like, dang, mom, you look great. What are you doing? Then you can say, well, son, I've been telling you now for about a year what I've been doing, and you haven't been listening. Uh, black seed oil, there's nothing magical about it, Maria. Uh, use animal fat to cook in. I know right now black seed oil is very popular. It'll cure this, that, and the other. Come on. No, no. There's so many things out there that people are making millions of dollars on. So many things that they're like, oh, this is the newest and latest and greatest, but it's also ancient. Come on. Okay. One great example that's really got under my, my feathers, under my skin lately is AG1, Athletic Greens. Let's talk about that for a minute. Do you know that there have been companies that have been drying out vegetables and fruits and grinding them up and putting the powder in capsules since 1914. This is not a new concept. There's nothing magical that they're doing at the AG1 factory. Okay? It's dehydrated, ground up vegetables and fruits. Now, do you really, you think that there's, they haven't discovered some new thing that brings out the magical, the magic of plants. It's just ground up dehydrated fruits and vegetables. That's that literally the same thing the guy was doing back in 1914 when he was, he was also uh, implying that his product would heal anything that ails you. Come on. What about balance of nature? I saw that question in the comments again. People have been grinding up dried out fruits and vegetables since 1914. There's nothing new. It's that's just the latest marketing gimmick. AG1, Athletic Greens. Ooh, Joe Rogan sponsors. Yeah, I know. Joe's like the rest of us. I love Joe. I respect him. He's trying to make a living. Uh, they've been trying to offer me $4,000 for one 60-second video saying that I enjoy my AG, AG1. I'm not going to do that because that's bullshit. It's it's dehydrated fruits and vegetables that they've ground up and put in a capsule. There's that's there's nothing magic. It's the same stuff the guy's been doing uh, was doing over 100 years ago. It's the same trick. Oh, you don't want to eat your vegetables here. Take these capsules. You know, all of us at one time in our life are gullible. We were all young and inexperienced. But after a certain age, you've got this thing that should be built in called a bullshit meter. And when somebody says, oh, I've, I've dehydrated these, these plants and I've ground them up and put them in capsules and it will transform your health. At some point, we need to stop being so gullible. Sorry. Sorry if that hurts anybody's feelings, but come on, guys. Just because it's on television? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you you don't want to cause any family strife, Euro Wars. My vegan daughter would freak if I sent her this. Look, let me just tell you guys, when somebody decides to stop just mindlessly eating the standard Western crap diet, and they, they're like, you know what, I'm going to go vegan. You know what I say? Good. Because, first of all, you're now thinking about the food that you put in your face. You're actually thinking, maybe what I eat is important. That's a great first step. 
Now, is vegan the long-term answer? No, no. Uh, but you might you might feel better for a few months on vegan, maybe even for a year or two. But it, unless you're taking a handful of supplements every day and a lot of the foods you're eating is fortified, you're going to develop vitamin and mineral deficiencies. You're going to have problems in the long run with vegan. But just going vegan, that's a great first step because now you're thinking about food. You're thinking about it. You may be reading some more articles about this diet or that diet. And hopefully you'll run across this YouTube channel at some point and say, huh, that sounds crazy, but I'm going to give it a shot. Yo, question, can you eat too much on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? Uh, on purpose, if you force yourself, of course you can. But if you eat as long as it's delicious and you quit eating when you're like, ooh, that still tastes good, but I'm full. I'm comfortably stuffed. I, I don't know if I could eat another bite. You stop eating at that point. See, every animal on the planet, it knows when to eat and it knows when to stop eating. Only humans who've had their food adulterated, messed with, slowly poisoned, do we get confused? Like, I don't know how much I should eat. I don't know what I should eat. Yeah, if you're eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, you can eat as much as you want. The key word being want. And when you're full, your satiety hormones are going to kick in and you're going to be like, oh, I still love bacon and steak, but I'm full. I don't want any more. That's it. You're done. Stop eating. And don't eat again until you're truly hungry. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. All right. Dark sky. I have COVID and now I have sudden tooth pain, hoping it goes away soon. Uh, it might go away soon. I don't know if COVID causes tooth pain. I've not read that in the literature. If that tooth keeps hurting, you might want to see your dentist. Will, when eating the proper human diet, how long does it take cells to rebuild with the new material? Great question. It depends on the cell, Will. If you're talking about the lining of your intestines, a week or two. Every new cell is made of the new material. And what's the material? What are you building those cells with? what you've eaten over the last two, two weeks. They'll all be replaced with new cells that'll be working better. The junctions will be tighter. The cells will be more efficient. Now, if you're talking about muscle cells, then you're talking about months to years before those cells are replaced. If you're talking about skin cells, it's about three months. And that's why when somebody goes true, real food keto, ketovore or carnivore, about three months later, four months, five months later, people are like, have you had something done? You look better. Your skin looks great. People hear that all the time. And that's because it takes three months for all your skin cells to be replaced. And after three months of eating carnivore, ketovore, carn, car, keto, all your skin cells have been replaced. And you're, you've been eating a meat-heavy diet by definition. So your skin cells just look healthier. They look better. Absolutely. Fred received uh, radioactive iodine for hyperthyroid back in 97, uh, stable on 125 mics of Synthroid. How important is iodine intake for inactive thyroid? How much? So uh, most people, including Fred, think that you only need iodine for your thyroid. Nothing could be further from the truth. Okay. Nothing could be further from the truth. Every cell in your body, Fred, needs iodine. Every cell that's ever been studied in the human body. So don't think, oh, it's just for my thyroid, because it's not, okay? That's why I recommend the vast majority of people in modern society, especially if they're eating the standard diet, are deficient in iodine, and that can lead to a lot of problems. So you need, I've got a video on my YouTube channel called The Seven Iodine-Rich Foods. There's actually foods that are full of iodine that you can eat. And if you don't like any of those, then you could take an iodine supplement. Good question. <clears throat> Christy started carnivore January the 7th. I'm on Ozempic 2 milligrams and metformin 500. How long does it normally take to get off these meds? Or is that something that I'm pretty much stuck with from now on, like the uh, my, my doctor says? You can stop the Ozempic right now, Christy. Of course, clear it with your doctor. But the, the Ozempic's not helping you at all if you're eating a carnivore diet. I would continue the metformin until you have a normal A1C, which is 5.6 or lower, 
then you can stop the metformin too after you clear it with your doctor, right? But the carnivore diet does what Ozempic claims to do without all of the side effects. Some of the side effects of which can be disastrous with Ozempic and Wegovy and Monjuro. Okay? Carnivore is going to give you all the benefits without any of the side effects. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Sarah. Alex, fourth week on carnivore and finally did a good workout at the gym. Woke up the next morning feeling like I got hit by a truck. What is the timeline for fat adaptation? Uh, typically uh, six to 12 weeks if you're working out hard. Okay. Now, people just living a, a regular life, working out a little bit, typically uh, three to six weeks. And so any week now, you're going to go to the gym and you're going to be able to work out hard. The next day, you're going to wake up and you won't even be sore at all. Hey, Ashley, I lapsed on alcohol and carbs last night. I am starting again. I have no excuse. What is your advice for self-discipline and self-reflection? Ashley's story. How many, how many of you guys watching this are like, I've been there. Yeah. This is part of breaking an addiction. Everybody believes in alcohol addiction, I think. I don't think there's any idiots that don't believe that there is such a thing as alcohol addiction. Everybody believes in drug addiction. But there are a lot of people out there, including doctors and dietitians, who don't believe in, in carb addiction or sugar addiction. Even though the research is clear, the same reward centers in the brain are triggered by a sugary food as are triggered by uh, clonopin or smoking some weed or any of the addictive substances. So, Ashley, we've all, we all fall off the wagon. Every single one of us. Nobody just quit smoking cold turkey the first try. They may lie and say they did that, but they didn't do that. When you when you relapse and you immediately go, Shh, crap, I screwed up. That's when you get up and go look in the mirror and have an honest talk and be like, yeah, you're not perfect. Okay, you messed up. But that doesn't mean you need to keep messing up. Right? We all mess up. But if you keep messing up, that means you, you gave up. And I know you don't want to give up. And so every when this happens, you're like, okay, no excuse. Uh, look in the mirror and forgive yourself and tell yourself you love yourself and then get act like that never happens and get right back on your road to rehabilitation. Right back, right back on your road to sobriety. Act like it never happens. Okay. If you if you stew in the guilt, that's going to make it even worse then you're really going to fall off the wagon and the wagon's going to run over your ass. You got to forgive yourself right now. Say, okay, fine. That was stupid, but it's, it's in the past. Can't change it, but I can change today and tomorrow. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Don't give up. You're getting better every day. Dark sky. Oh, we already did dark sky. I don't know why that showed up again. Thank you, Richard. Snowland, years on keto carnivore, love it. Got COVID in August of 23, haven't recovered from the brain fog, de depression, anxiety, and migraine, like headache. CRP and ESR are elevated, so you still got inflammation. What test should I do? Macro ratio change or fasting needed? I would probably bump up your, your daily fasting, Snowland, and maybe do a, a two-day fast once a week or a three-day fast every other week and keep your diet very tight, very strict, as low carb as you possibly can. Make sure you're getting the best quality sleep you can. Go back to your doctor and have them recheck you out again and make sure there's not something else going on in the background that you may be blaming on the infection or blaming on what it, something else. Uh, a hidden medical diagnosis sometimes can make you think, uh, this is not working, but it's just because you don't have the right diagnosis yet. All right. All right. Here's the one from Ron. I'm curious about whether the proper human diet can get me off beta blockers. Had a triple bypass in July of 18, put me on statins and beta blockers. And so part of the reason you're on a beta blocker is probably you had high blood pressure at the time of the heart attack. And then also there's some research that shows that beta blockers are protective from us to they protect you at least somewhat from a second heart attack. Uh, 
if you have reversed all of your metabolic health markers back to normal and optimal and your blood pressure runs great at home, that's the time to talk to your doctor and say, hey, I've been taking these beta blockers for what, four years now, five years. I'm ready to wean them down, maybe even come off of them. Have that conversation with your doctor. Okay, now the statins, the statins are not helping you at all. You can throw those in the garbage right now. Christy says, do you ever eat veggies? I like cucumbers. I like cucumbers too, Christy, but what I like even better than cucumbers is how I feel when I'm eating a carnivore diet. Uh, I was I was on a, a vegetable heavy ketogenic diet for a couple of years, and I felt better on that than I felt on the old way of eating, just eating whatever. But I didn't, then I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to eat meat heavy keto, felt even better. Drop the veggies down, push the fatty meat up. And then I thought, I'm going to try a month of carnivore. And that's when my eyes were open. It's like, wow, I'm supposed to be a carnivore. I feel better now than I felt when I was 35 years old. And that's saying something coming from a guy who's 55 years old. I shouldn't feel better at 55 than I did at 35, but I definitely do every single day. I just did a day's work on the farm today that my 35 year old self could not have kept up with me. He would have been sitting on a stump going, dude, can we go back to the house now? Red meat is good for iron, LaDonna. If your iron is low, uh, eat the red meat and eat the liver. You got you to gotta learn to like your liver. <clears throat> if you saute it in bacon grease with garlic, I promise you, when you get it just right, you're going to be able to get it down. That and red meat's going to bump that iron back up. Now, make sure they've figured out why you're anemic. They need to know the reason why. But if they know the reason, then red meat and liver, that's, that's how you get rid of that. Johnny C is watching from Taipei. I love it. All right. <laughs> Here, okay, so how many people watching this right now? We got 22, 2,300 people watching this. How many of you guys have, are on a carnivore diet and you, you've noticed that your body odor is less severe now? Or your spouse is like, you know, you don't stink like you used to. Or somebody who's a friend is like, man, dude, you used to have the worst BO in the world. But now that you're on carnivore, your BO is so much better. Watch the comments, Audi. Uh, I've never heard of somebody, when they go carnivore, their body odor got worse. Everybody I've talked to about this, including me and Nisha. And trust me, Nisha's got a nose like a hound dog. And she's uh, not afraid to be honest. If my body odor was worse on a carnivore diet, she would have told me that. But what she says is, you know, I think you could take a bath every other day, even working on the farm, and you would you would barely stink. Whereas used to, back when I was eating high veggie paleo, oh my god, bo was awful. Uh, when I took my shoes off, it, it was like there was a dead corpse in the room. Now body odor is no longer an issue also goes for number two in the bathroom uh if if you're currently eating just a standard diet and you're like yeah when i go to the number two i have to put a warning sign on the door don't go in here for 30 minutes it's not like that when you're a carnivore it's kind of it's kind of cool to not have to worry about it god i hope nobody comes in here for a few minutes just look at the comments audi i think you'll be surprised mike Six foot two, 289 pound male, three weeks in, feeling great, down 13 pounds already. Belly fat is stubborn. Yes, it is. Uh, besides vitamin P, that stands for patience. Any suggestions to help that? And his, uh, is liverwurst a good substitute? Yeah, watch the ingredients on the liverwurst, but if it's, if it's, if it's essentially zero sugar, liverwurst is fine. Excellent way to get your liver. You can eat liver pate, liver mousse, liverwurst liver cheese, any of that stuff is wonderful, okay? Now, 
I, I'm assuming you're you're on carnivore, Mike. What I would do if what I would do if I were you is if you're not already doing so, I would fast for 18 hours a day, and then have a six hour feasting window where you have two big carnivore meals in that six hour period of time. If you're already doing that, tighten it up to a 22 hour fast and just have one big carnivore feast a day, and fast the rest of the day if you want to speed up the fat loss. Teresa, is carnivore okay for someone with a stent? Absolutely, yes. Not from heart disease. It was a defective artery. Doc has taken me off all meds after a year. Excellent, Teresa. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody watching this, if, if you are a human being and you have any medical condition or any you've had any surgery, you're on any medication, you can still benefit from a proper human diet without exception. If you're human, you deserve a proper human diet and all the benefits it'll give you. Kitty, Kitty, diagnosed with Graves' disease. Will fasting or carnivore diet help? I'm in living hell right now. Now you got to see your doctor. You got to get on the medications. You got to find out why you have Graves. And you, but absolutely, you you need to be a, adapting to a carnivore diet right now. I would do it slowly over the next month, Kitty. Wean down the carbs. Wean up the fatty meat every day. Keep doing that over a month. <clears throat> That's going to help your immune system to calm down and maybe stop attacking your thyroid, but definitely follow up with your doctor as well. Lansing Lawn Service. I've been eating carnivore for almost four weeks and lost 13 pounds, but now weight is going back up. Any advice? You need to take a dose of vitamin P. Patience, have patience. Your body's healing. You've been abusing your body for years. It's going to take time for it to heal. It's going to take time for everything to turn around. The 13-pound weight loss was all the unhealthy edema that you had stored. That's a great sign that you're doing this right and that you're going to benefit from it greatly. But you got to give it time. Got to give it time. Okay. Yeah, hyper hyperthyroid sucks. I totally agree. It's no fun at all. Ah, JH, talk to me about diverticulosis and carnivore, pain under my left rib and to my back. Help. Hey, Jen. Uh, Jen, diverticulosis is not caused from eating meat. Diverticulitis is, is almost certainly caused from eating highly processed, high carbohydrate foods that lead to you being chronically constipated where you have to strain. Uh, and then also all the cells in your colon were built out of inferior materials because you're eating a crap diet. Carnivores notice, uh, carnivores who have had diverticulosis in the past had flare-ups of diverticulitis. When they go carnivore, they just don't have the flare-ups anymore. Okay. Many of them have had a repeat colonoscopy after a year or two on carnivore. And the colonoscopist says, yeah, your diverticuli are much less prominent now than they used to be. I'm not sure why. Yeah. But you're not going to have flare-ups of diverticulitis on carnivore. And so if you're having pain right now, you need to see your doctor. You may be having a flare-up. Mm. Peggy Sue says, Dr. Barry, what's the best way to gain weight on carnivore? Well, there's two ways you can gain weight, Peggy. You can gain fat or you can gain muscle and bone strength. Both of those things show up on the scale equally. The scale doesn't know the difference between fat and muscle in your body. So if you want to gain fat, add a bunch of fruit and honey to your carnivore diet and you'll start putting on some fat. If you'd like to gain muscle and bone strength, then you're going to, you're going to start keep eating lots of fatty red meat and you're going to start lifting heavy things. That may mean joining the gym and, and having a trainer teach you how to lift weights. That may mean uh, buying two five-pound weights off Amazon. I don't know where you're at in your fitness journey right now, Peggy Sue. But building muscle shows up on the scale just as easily as gaining fat shows up on the scale. That's how you gain weight on carnivore. We've had many people come to carnivore underweight, even people with anorexia. And when they go carnivore, they just they start to gain weight. It's it's always healthy, lean, lean muscle, connective tissue and bone. 
Now, women are supposed to hold somewhere between 15 and 25 percent body fat. That's the healthy body fat percentage for women. And women on carnivore, if they're severely underweight, they'll put on and they'll get up to about 15 percent body fat, which is a good thing. That's very healthy. All right, here you go, guys. Jennifer is on the carnivore diet. She had a CAC score done last year. Her number was 642. Had it repeated this year, it's 432. And her cholesterol went down too. Uh, that's probably not too low unless you're taking cholesterol lowering medications, Jennifer. Uh, but I hear, I get this question all the time. I've got a high CAC score. Will it go down on carnivore? Well, here's Jennifer Lucas. She wants you guys to know her CAC score dropped almost 200 points in a year. Yes, we see this all the time. Now, I can't promise you that your CAC is going to drop, but I get this kind of message every single day in our private group. Elizabeth, 62-year-old female, when you're carnivore, postmenopausal 10 years, felt like I was ovulating the last two months. Say it isn't so. Well, Elizabeth, one of the things that a proper human diet does, keto, ketovore, carnivore, is that it, it makes you physiologically younger. And you're 62, so you're probably, your, your cycle's probably not going to start again. But we've seen many women in their late 40s, early 50s, mid 50s, even late 50s, when they start real whole food keto or ketovore, carnivore, and then after a few months, their, their periods start again because their body's like, oh, God, there's so much high quality food around here and, and everything's working so much better. Hey, let's let's start that back up again, too. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Actually, that's how that's one of the things when I when I work full time in the clinic, I had a lady who was 48 and a lady who was 51. They both started keto and they came back a few months later and they were both pregnant, didn't know each other, were not connected. One was very happy that she was pregnant because her and her husband had been trying for years. The 51-year-old, however, was not happy with me at all. She said, did this keto diet get me pregnant? And I said, well, I think probably there was a man involved as well, but it probably did help. Yeah. And that's why many fertility specialists now recommend keto, ketovore, carnivore to their female patients who are having trouble getting pregnant. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not magic. It's physiology. Oh, somebody's asking about, I said something about our private group. I'll, I'll pop it up here. Uh, where's that at? Here we go, right here. If anybody wants to become a member of our private community, it's just phdhealth.community. That's the address. Type that in and for it, the you can get in the door for five bucks a month. Five bucks a month. And you've got access to thousands of people just like you who their doctor's telling them one thing. And then when they listen to a YouTube doctor, their health drastically improves. And they're able to stop medications that they never thought they'd be able to get off of. PhDHealth.community. Yeah, that's it. Celestial seasoning. Should I take a baby aspirin daily during my pregnancy post-COVID? My midwife recommended it, but I'm hesitant. I get your hesitancy, but I also know why your midwife recommended that. I think a good compromise is if you took a baby aspirin twice a week, Tuesday and Friday. That way you, you're, you're – because the aspirin's effects on the platelet last for 14 days. So if you take a baby aspirin twice a week, three three times a week, every other day – Every third day, you're going to be getting the benefits without possibly having a side effect, a complication from taking it too often. Jason, my wife has Hashimoto's and Parkinson's. What is a, uh, what is a safe way to fast? How many days is too many? What I really like for somebody like your wife, Jason, is a daily intermittent fast. Uh, how when, when does she eat her first meal of the day, typically? And then when does she eat the last meal of her day, typically? Then how many hours are between that last meal and that first meal? For the average person, it's 12 hours for most people. It counts snacks too. Snacks, snacks are food, okay? 
if if it's 12 hours, then let's say, okay, let's try to fast for 16 hours a day. So move that morning meal an hour later and the evening meal move it an hour earlier. Now you're fasting for 14 hours. Then go to 16 hours and try to get it up to 18 hours. For many people, Jason, they don't have to do three-day, four-day, five-day fast. They can if they want to, but they don't have to. If they can get up to an 18-hour daily fast, that works wonders for many, many people. And it's it's much easier for many people to do. Thank you, Dawn. TD, hello. Is there anything to is there anything to worry about using propane for grilling? Uh, I don't think so. As long as all your equipment's working properly and your meat doesn't smell like uh, a hydrocarbon, I think it's perfectly fine. Propane burns very cleanly, very completely. I don't think you're getting anything of concern from the propane. Is smoked meat safe? A hundred percent. Here's where you're, here's the common sense principle. Human beings have been eating fatty meat ever since we've been on this planet. And for the majority, like 95% of that time on this planet, we've been cooking that meat over an open fire on a stick or some little contrivance like that. Have you ever tried to cook meat over an open fire on, on the end of a stick? It's going to, you're going to, it's going to get smoked. It's going to get charred. That's how we've always eaten meat. So now charred meat is bad. Smoked meat is bad. What, what are you talking about? That's like telling somebody, oh, you shouldn't breathe air. That's bad for you. Because we've been eating smoked meat and, and charred meat for exactly the same number of days as we've been breathing air and drinking water. Makes no sense to say, oh, well, that's dangerous now. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley's in our group. Uh, Ashley, if you need me, you know where I'm at. Molly, I started carnivore to heal my gut and reduce inflammation seven days in and losing too much weight down from 124 to 119. Too skinny. Okay, so first of all, I wish you'd tell me how tall you are. You're the the running out of gas part is you're not you're not keto adapted yet. You got to give it a few weeks because you're very you're very athletic. I know dance is quite athletic, especially depending on the style. Uh, you lost five pounds. That was water weight. That wasn't muscle. That wasn't fat. That was water. And that's a very good indication that you're moving in the right direction. Okay, you've got to do not portion control. I want you to eat. You you may not be eating enough food. You've got to eat until you're comfortably stuffed. I know you're a dance instructor. I know you're you're slender. You cannot portion food. You have to eat until you are full. And if that means eating enough that your dinner partner goes, damn, you're putting it away. That's fine. Don't worry about that. You let your body tell you how much food you need to eat. Now, if you're trying to do that with jelly donuts, you're going to eat too much. But if you're doing it with real human food, meat, eggs, a little bit of veg, if you want to be keto, you're not going to overeat that. Okay, so stop portion controlling, Molly. Eat until you're comfortably stuffed. Hey, that's a great idea, Carb Crusher. Where'd you go? Carb Crusher said, said smash that thumbs up. Well, I can't find <laughs> the comments are going too fast. Where'd you go, Carb Crusher? Dang it. He's completely gone. I don't even know where it went. Okay, anyway. Oh, there it is. Okay. Carb Crusher says, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, you're welcome to share this video on your social media. That helps me reach new people, just like you, who just haven't heard this yet. Okay? Please, help the algorithm. Help me help new people. Kayla says, what are your thoughts on keto carnivore after bariatric surgery? I think you, you are still a human being, Kayla, even though your gastrointestinal system has been permanently surgically mutilated. You're still a human being and you're going to you deserve all the benefits of a proper human diet and you're going to get those benefits. OK, there are tens of thousands of people who have had gastric bypass and bariatric surgery who are now eating keto, ketable carnivore, tens of thousands and benefiting from it every day. Absolutely. <clears throat> Ashley, 
Ashley, my mom is four weeks into dirty carnivore. She is on blood pressure meds, but is not taking a pill in five days, and her blood pressure is normal. Isn't that funny? Is this safe, or should she get off her BP meds under direct doctor supervision? So obviously, officially, I have to tell you, always consult with your doctor before changing any medication. She's taking blood pressure medicines to lower her blood pressure back to normal, but you're saying she's not hadn't been taking her blood pressure meds and her blood pressure is normal because of the carnivore diet. So I'm 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 going to officially recommend that you consult with her doctor about changing her medication, but I think common sense is what it is. Tommy Kratt? Tommy Kratt, colon cancer survivor with colostomy bag on keto. Is there things I should watch out for? I've lost 30 pounds down from 318. No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay. All of human digestion takes place in the stomach and the small intestine. Uh, the, the large intestine, 99% of its job is to remove water from the waste, to, to consolidate the waste, pack the waste, and then poop out the waste. You don't, you, you don't need a colon to eat a proper human diet because especially meat and eggs, they're completely digested and gone. They've been absorbed before they ever make it to your large intestine. Yeah. Sarah. I have been keto carnivore for seven months. I have very loose stools. Why? How do I correct it? If you've had, if you've been keto for seven months and you you're having diarrhea, you need to go see your doctor. There's nothing nothing about a keto diet that causes diarrhea. Now, for some few people, when they start carnivore, they'll have diarrhea for a few days or a few weeks. But if you if you've got if you've had diarrhea for seven months, you need to go see your doctor. The diet didn't cause that. Sir, Digby Chicken Caesar on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Do you have to eat until comfortably stuffed every day until you don't want to eat anymore or just one day till you feel like eating a day? You can eat one meal a day, Sir Digby. There's a few people on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs that they only get hungry every other day. And my advice to them is if, if you've got lots of extra fat that you're trying to lose, eat every other day. Listen to your hunger. Because what will happen, Sir Digby, is as you lose the fat, your appetite will increase. Okay, Because right now your body's living off your stored fat. And it's also getting protein from the connective tissue that was holding the fat in place. So you're getting free protein and free fat from your, your obesity. But once you've used up most of that, then your appetite will start to increase. Okay, So eating once a day is perfectly fine on a carnivore diet. Hooper V fixes help. I'm reading online that red meat and eggs are bad for psoriasis because of the arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is a great antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. Arachidonic acid, your body makes it. It's very good for you. This is foolishness. Yeah, uh, I can't tell you the number of people in our in our private group who had literally their body was covered with psoriasis, and now that they're carnivores, they either have no psoriasis visible or they have one little patch about this big around on the back of their leg or on their arm or something. Whereas before they were 90% covered. Uh, meat and eggs definitely does not cause or worsen psoriasis. This is complete baloney. Let me guess, you were reading this on a vegan website or a plant-based website. Nobody with any true understanding of human digestive physiology would say such a stupid thing as that. I'm sorry you were misled. Ah, Kelly, is keto okay for me if I've had my gallbladder removed? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I've got a YouTube video about this. You can absolutely eat keto or carnivore without a gallbladder. Now, you should cut, You should transition from your existing diet over to keto carnivore slower than somebody who still has their gallbladder because the gallbladder's function is to store and constant, concentrate bile, and the bile emulsifies and breaks up the fat. But your liver will produce more bile if you slowly ramp up the amount of fat that you're eating. But if you do it too quick, you'll get diarrhea. But it's not temporary, and it's also not dangerous. 
Mm. Sherry, how long before inflammation is reduced in my body? I'm seven weeks in. Typically six to 12 weeks, Sherry, people with severe inflammation, autoimmune conditions, six to 12 weeks is when they typically start going, you know what? I feel way less inflamed. And then they go see their doctor and they get their CRP and their IL-6 checked. And the doctor's like, oh, yeah, your markers of infl inflammation are much better. Keep doing what you're doing, Sherry. You're going to be happy. The moderators are actually having a meeting tonight, Paul Beter. I'm on my own. They're, they're in a meeting with Nisha right now. Nancy, I absolutely haven't worn deodorant in forever on the carnivore diet. Just one of the many benefits. Uh, anybody who's not carnivore right now, you're probably reading Nancy's comment going, what? You're telling me that just eating only meat made your BO go away. The first time I heard this, I had the same reaction you, you're having. I was like, what? I don't think the diet does that. But here's the problem. I've heard this now from over a thousand people, just like Nancy. Normal folks with no reason to lie. And they're like, yeah, I I don't, I stopped using antiperspirant. And I, this is for me, too. I put just a little bit of deodorant that's a scent that Nisha loves. And I, that, that, I just put that on for Nisha. I, I'm, I'm used to when I was, even when I was eating like high veg paleo, dude, I had to have the antiperspirant. If you just bought me deodorant, I'd be like, this is not going to help me. I've got to have antiperspirant because I'd have a sweat ring this big around and I'll be stinking in about an hour. But it, I just don't do that anymore. And neither does Nancy. And so if any of you guys have bad BO, 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, you maybe should give that a try. Jennifer, what should you do if you lose your taste for eggs? Eat meat and seafood. This this happens to I'll I'll go through where I won't eat eggs for two or three weeks. I'll just eat red meat, seafood, ribs, steak, ground beef, uh, sardines, cod liver, and then all of a sudden one day I'll be like, you know what would be good? I'm about to eat some eggs today. I eat um, six egg yolks. I usually throw the whites away. I feel like the whites maybe don't agree with me so much, but the yolks do me great. I had six egg yolks mixed up in two pounds of. 70 30 ground beef and then i had a, a couple of ladles of uh nisha's chicken soup she made yesterday uh, she just posted a new vlog today on her channel talking while she was making the chicken soup so if you want to see how she made that you can see that recipe mm. we hear this all the time as well uh, Fred says, carnivore fix the sunspots on my face and my dry skin. I can be out in the Caribbean sun for three to four hours now without burning. Remember at the very be beginning of this video, I said that your the cells in your body are made of what you eat. So when you're eating a, a shit diet, your cells are made of that crappy material. But when you start eating the most nutrient-dense, ancestrally appropriate food on planet Earth for humans, which is meat, fatty meat, fatty red meat, all of a sudden your cells have access to the penultimate, preeminent, top-of-the-line building materials. And all of a sudden, you don't sunburn as easy. Sunspots and little blemishes and imperfections start to get less noticeable. Deep, deep wrinkles start to get less noticeable. I'm not saying it's like an anti-wrinkle cream. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, yes, your skin's going to improve because now you're building your skin out of really good building materials. And every single skin cell you have is replaced every three months. Okay, three months from now, your skin will not be the same skin you have right now. You'll have a completely new skin. So if you started today and changed what you're building your skin out of by changing your diet, three months from now, some some carnivores, like their family members, are accusing of, of having a facelift, a mini facelift or micro needling or dermabrasion. They're like, there's no way your skin got that much better just from eating a certain diet. Okay. Believe whatever you want. <clears throat> Josie, any tips for sinus polyp? Six months carnivore and the inflammation is definitely less severe but I still struggle with breathing, no smell or taste. 
sometimes, Josie, when nasal polyps have gone or sinus polyps have gone long enough and you've had them uh, for a long enough time, they get big enough, you're just going to have to have the damn thing taken out. Go see your ear, nose, and throat guy. But we have seen people's uh, sinus polyps as well as intestinal polyps shrink and go away. Yes, yes. And you can tell your inflammation's better. Now, you got two choices, Josie. If it's really just driving you nuts, go get the thing taken out. But if you're like, yeah, I don't like it, but I, I'm, I'm not ready for surgery, then give it six more months and stay very tight on your carnivore diet. And you might be shocked at another six months and you're like, hey, I can actually breathe through my nose again. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Ashley. Dan, 10 months carnivore, reversed type 2 diabetes. After hitting target weight, I have 8 to satiety. I'm bottomless pit and gain uh, 13 pounds from my low. 22% body fat doing OMAD or 18.6, approximately 3,000 calories worth of meat and eggs. So 22% body fat, is that is that too high of a percentage of body fat? Uh, most authorities will say that a, that a man should have somewhere between 10 and 20% body fat. Women, 15 to 25%. Some say 15 to 30%. Uh, but 22% body fat, Dan, that puts you in the top, that puts you in the 95th percentile for being in shape. <clears throat> what I would do if I were you is I would bump up the fat macro of what you're eating, uh, bump up the fat ratio. And you'll eat less, and then you'll you'll lose down the extra two percent, so that then you'll be in the perfect range. Check this out, Adrian, fifty-eight year old male, carnivore for one year, had an echo uh, this week. Twenty-five percent of blockage is completely gone. Cardio doctor says monitoring is no longer necessary. Thank you for all you do. Darth Carnivore. On Carnivore, stopped metformin when my A1C went down to 5.5. But after three more months, it crept up to 5.8. Should I restart the metformin? And what uh, glycated albumin range result would show longer-lived RBCs? So for many people on Carnivore, not many, for a few people, I'd say 10% of people, their A1C will actually start to creep back up. It never goes back to type 2 diabetes levels, but it'll get up to 5.8. And but when they check another lab called a glycated albumin, it's it's beautiful, it's perfect. And uh, me and other doctors in this community think that that when you build your red blood cells out of the best building materials possible, and that's a nutrient dense, ancestrally appropriate, uninflammatory diet, they live longer. That gives them longer to glycate. So if I were you, Darth Carnivore, I would just get a glycated albumin checked. If it's within the normal range, then your A1C being 5.8 is, is a false positive, okay? we Any good doctor knows that there are multiple things that can make your A1C falsely high or falsely low. I actually have a YouTube video about it. There's multiple things. For example, somebody who's an alcoholic, they'll have a falsely low A1C because the red blood cells are dying so quickly because of the alcohol poisoning that their A1C, they can be a severe type 2 diabetic and their A1C will only be 6.2 or something. Yeah, there's multiple things. You can look this up, okay? Uh, but carnivores, their red blood cells live longer, therefore they glycate more. Get a glycated albumin and you'll be very happy. If you're in the private group, please post your results. Thank you, Amy. Catherine, I take ox bile capsules as suggested, suggested because I don't have a gallbladder. I'm still having trouble with fat intake. Also, I'm hypothyroid. Any suggestions? Thanks. Um, no, no suggestions, Catherine. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep slowly increasing your fat intake. Okay. Every human on the planet is designed to eat animal fat. That's that's what we evolved eating. Okay, your body will adjust to this if you give it long enough. Michelle, hey, Dr. Barry, should I be worried about my ALP, alkaline phosphatase? It says it's high at 121. What is the cause for being high? 
thank you for all you do. So alkaline phosphatase can be high for any, there's a bunch of reasons, okay? Ask your doctor, Michelle, for a fractionated alkaline phosphatase. Fractionated alkaline phosphatase. It'll actually break it up into diff the, the different factions. Uh, you can have high alkaline phosphatase from a biliary tree or a liver problem. You can have it from a gut problem. You can have it from a, a, a uterine ovarian problem. You can have it from a bone problem. The fractionated will break them up and it'll tell you where the problem is. Then you can look in more detail at that area. We already got Darth Carnivore. All right. How is it going to affect you being keeping those pictures? Oh, there you are. Oh, 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 oh. You look beautiful. Oh, look, we've got a vegan. Kenberry's blood pressure is so high that his skin is turning red through the, the pressure of blood on his skin. So, Infinite Warfare doesn't realize that. They're actually making fun of my heritage. I'm Scotch Irish, aka a redneck, and we we tend to have ruddy skin. So please stop making fun of the color of my skin and making fun of my heritage. Infinite warfare. Thank you. Yeah, you know. Um, Miss Kitty, husband has lost 25 pounds on carnivore in three weeks. Huzzah. His appetite is gone. Any suggestions to in increase appetite? Well, let me ask you this, Miss Kitty. Does he still have extra fat left to lose? If your answer is yes, then let his appetite tell him when to eat. He's probably in deep ketosis right now. He's burning that body fat left and right. If he doesn't feel like eating for a day or two, this is called fasting and it's completely normal and healthy. Let him fast until he gets truly hungry again. Then he, I promise you he'll eat. Yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of weak, wasn't it, Esme? But I, I, you know, I try to help vegans too. Who else is a redneck? I'm kind of proud of it. I'm not ashamed of it, but sometimes people try to make fun of me because of the color of my skin. Yeah, Karen, I've got several videos on my YouTube channel about lowering blood pressure. Uh, keto, ketovore, carnivore is the way. About 80% of people have what's called idiopathic or primary hypertension, which means we don't know why you have it. And that's what gets you a handful of, of blood pressure pills from the doctor. The vast majority of people with idiopathic or essential primary hypertension, it gets much, much better on keto, ketovore, or carnivore. About 20% of people have a secondary cause of high blood pressure. And I've got a YouTube video because many doctors forget all the causes of secondary hypertension. And that's why I made a YouTube video. So you guys can watch that and then go to your doctor with a list and say, hey, have you checked for this? Have you checked for that? And very commonly, we'll have somebody who goes strict keto or carnivore and because of high blood pressure. And then after six months, they're like, no, my blood pressure is still just as high. Almost always that person has a secondary cause of hypertension. They watch my video about secondary causes. They go see their doctor and their doctor's like, oh, yeah, I forgot to check your renal arteries. Let me let's get a, uh, a CTA uh, of your renal arteries. And they're like, oh, you've got renal artery stenosis. Yeah. That's why your blood pressure is not coming down. Then they fix that. Then your blood pressure comes down. Yeah, Nancy, a lot of us rednecks, people love to make fun of us. But you know what? That reveals their weakness, not mine. I understand. When I was, when I was young and immature, I used to make fun of people too. But then I grew up. Oh, yeah, I forgot about King David. He had ruddy skin, too, didn't he? I guess it was his high blood pressure. Anyway, I'm not worried about it. 
All right, let's see what else we've got here. Steven, hey, Doc, love eggs. and know most hens have uh, some soy or corn in the diet. Is there any risk to being exposed to corn and soy from eggs? When you look at the egg, do you see any soy or corn particles in there? No, because the chicken has thoroughly digested those things, and they've pooped out all the waste. And with, with the, the chicken, think about the chicken's reproductive cycle. Think about the chicken's evolution. The chicken is only going to put the very best things from its diet into its egg because that egg is its progeny. The chicken's not going to be like, oh, they fed me corn and soybeans. I'll just shove that shit in the egg. No, they, they shove the shit out their butthole. The egg gets only the best of the best of what the chicken is eating. That makes sense. A lot of people get confused about this kind of stuff. I, I I love eating farm fresh eggs where the chickens had a chance to live a real chicken life and eat bugs and worms and seeds and grass. Uh, but they all, most most everybody who has backyard chickens, uh, we have to feed our chickens some layer pellets. Uh, chickens need a very large territory if they're just going to forage for their food. And so we give them we give them a little bit of uh, layer pellets, which has ground up corns and soybean and who knows what else. But they're not going to put the junk in their eggs. They're going to put only the best of the best in their eggs. Fasting insulin one point six. That's beautiful. No, oh, that's great. What was your A one C? You're doing great, Robin. What are your thoughts on additional cholesterol testing, like the cardiac IQ panel? Uh, the small, medium, and large pout particles. Mine went crazy high after 90 days of ketovore. So the vast majority of, of the, the little lab test results on the, the cardiac IQ panel are still experimental in nature. They haven't been around nearly enough years for us to know if they're truly a risk factor, if, they're, if they truly mean anything at all. Okay, what we know truly means something is what's your A1C, what's your fasting insulin, what's your triglycerides, and what's your HDL cholesterol, and what, what's your CRP, levels of inflammation. That's what means something. Now, it may turn out that the small, medium particles, the particle number, uh, may turn out the ApoB, the LP little a, that, that might turn out to mean something, but we currently don't have enough track experience with those to know if they really mean anything or not. I predict that they won't mean anything. And I also predict that if you will, if you will recheck after another 90 days of, of ketovore, your particle size and number will be much closer to the numbers that you desire. Yeah, so essential hypertension, Mark, is that's when your doctor says, oh, you just have, you're just genetic, you have high blood pressure. That's, that's, Here's how you can know that, Mark. If you will, if you will start a diet tomorrow morning, 90 days of, of as much beef, butter, bacon, and eggs as she wants. She can add seafood if she wants, as long as it's not breaded or fried in a vegetable seed oil. Meat, meat and eggs for 90 days. And then buy a blood pressure cuff and check her blood pressure properly. I've got a video on YouTube, how to check your blood pressure. Okay. And after 90 days of that, you're going to see that her blood pressure is much lower. So that proves that it was not genetic, doesn't it? Her genetics haven't changed in 90 days. She still has the same DNA, right? Michelle, hey, Dr. Barry, do you know the name of a good study that debunks red meat causes cancer, please? It's the feedback I get the most from naysayers about eating carnivore keto. So first of all, Michelle, those people are the ones actually making the claim. And so the laws of logic dictate that they should be the ones who have to offer the proof. That's first of all, Any, anybody who makes a claim, they're the ones who should produce proof. Okay. It's hard to prove a negative. In other words, it's hard to prove that red meat does not cause cancer. But all the people saying, oh, red meat causes cancer. Well, where's the proof? You have to have proof of your claim or you have to shut the hell up. Now, I have a video on my YouTube channel about red meat and cancer. 
And you can, the way to find that is to just go to the YouTube in the search bar, type in Dr. Barry Red Meat. Okay, Dr. Barry Cancer. Dr. Barry Red Meat Cancer. Type those keywords in, it'll pop right up and you can watch it. Down in the show notes, I actually talk about the research that these naysayers are using to prove that red meat causes cancer. All the research is observational and that and the results show very, very low hazard ratios. Okay. Which means it doesn't prove anything. It shows a possible weak association. Doesn't doesn't show causation, doesn't show proof. There is no research on planet Earth that shows that, that that proves that, that that says that red meat is causative of cancer. There's literally not a single study on planet Earth that shows causation. So what they're saying is dis, either dishonest, they're either being dishonest or they're ignorant. And you don't have to call them either one unless you want to fight. But you just look at the I, I, I cite the research in my video on YouTube about red meat and cancer. I've, I've linked to the research. And when you read the research, you'll be like, wait, this is it. This is the this is the research that the World Health Organization used to label red meat a type two carcinogen. This research right here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's the research that that. Sh- that the, the yeah 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 it and that's what kind of clown world we're kind of living in when it comes to nutrition science right now because the research doesn't prove anything barely shows an association okay dave uh, i don't know if you were with me earlier but i talked about being gullible and it's okay to be gullible now but i want you to be less gullible tomorrow CBD gummies will not cure your diabetes. No. Okay. I I understand that they said that it would, maybe in their ads. But no, no. What's going to cure your diabetes, if it's type 2 diabetes, is eating a low-carb enough diet that's low enough in carbs, strictly enough for long enough. You'll, You'll reverse your type 2 diabetes. It'll be gone. CBD gummies might get you high, but they're not, they're not gonna. Cure your diabetes. No, no. Neither is AG1. Neither is balance of nature. Neither is any other supplement on planet Earth. Neither is any pharmaceutical drug on the the planet. They're not going to cure your type 2 diabetes. They might lower your A1C by one or two tenths of a point. They're not going to cure it. The only way to cure it is to stop eating the slow poison. That is the standard Western diet. That's how you cure your type 2 diabetes. The way you know it's cured is when your A1C goes back to 5.6 or lower. Okay. They should rename type 2 diabetes carbohydrate toxicity syndrome because it's a slow poisoning event. When you remove enough of the slow poison, the symptoms of the poisoning disappear. JD got got gout, got a gout flare up on carnivore. So now I'm guessing, JD, that you've had multiple gout flare ups before you were carnivore, right? Right. So we know the carnivore diet didn't cause your gout flare up because you've had them before you were carnivore. Uh, What's going to happen is as you continue carnivore, you're going to get gout flare ups. You have gout, right, JD? You're going to have gout flare ups less often. And when you do have them in the future, they're going to be less severe. Okay. Now, some people on carnivore, they they have one gout flare up a few weeks or months after they start, and then they never have another gout flare up. But most people with gout, they'll say, yeah, every now and then I have a mild flare up, lasts for a day or two. I don't even go go to the doctor. I don't even take anything for it. It's so mild now on carnivore. That's that's what you can expect. But yeah, you you're still going to have a gout flare up every now and then. We're not talking about magic here. We're just talking about physiology. Ashley, my mom is one month dirty carnivore. Uh, you asked the question about BP. Her kidney function is at 43. Do you think carnivore can help that number go up? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Fatty meat carnivore, eggs with the yolk, uh, fatty cuts of seafood, sardines, cod liver, 
recheck her creatinine and her EGFR, recheck them every three months and watch that, watch that number go up. Yep. And if you're in our, our private group, then please post her results because a lot of people who are new to this are like, you can't improve kidney function by eating meat. Okay, believe what you want to believe. I've seen it happen. Improving kidney function, we've 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 had all easily five thousand, if not over ten thousand people. It's just like, yeah, yeah. My 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 stage one CKD went away. My my stage two, stage three went back to stage one. Yeah, we see this every day. But check those levels every three months. All right, guys. Now, if you have questions that we didn't get answered today, I'm going to tell you what you can do, okay? Let me show you what to do. You're going to go to phdhealth.community. It's a quick sign up. It costs five bucks a month to be in our private community, okay? Nisha and I go live in there four or five times a week. We have 10 PhD certified coaches. All of them went, went to the primal health coaching. They went through, they graduated, they're certified health coaches. And they're also approved by me and Nisha. And they, they, if you need a one-on-one -on -one coach, they're happy to make that deal with you. I don't get a penny off that. If, but most people just need to be in a group of like-minded people. So when you're feeling weak or when you have an actual honest question, like, I don't know, is this okay or not okay? You can ask it. It's like being part of a Facebook group, but the only difference is it ain't Facebook. We don't sell your information. We don't collect your information. We just try to help people reverse chronic disease. PhDHealth.community. And we'll be, uh, I think Nisha is going to be live in there tomorrow answering questions. And then we're live in there an additional three times a week, plus however many times the coaches go live in there. There's always somebody going live in the group answering questions. Okay. I think it's worth five bucks a month. If you want to, you can sign up at higher levels, but it's not necessary. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. I'll see you next time. <laughs>